evidence. It strikes us intuitively as true when we see it happening. But recorded video, it's not really cinema verite. Uh, it isn't necessarily true. Uh, it may have been edited. It's almost certainly been taken out of context. And without the context, you can't really know uh, what led to the little snippet of video, who's doing it, and why. Uh, but people see the, the video and they, and they respond to it. So we have the recording technology. Then we have uh, social media. So it's now possible for people to uh, post their own material without any editorial intervention. You know, it started with, with websites and blogs, but that's, that's so last century, isn't it? Uh, so now you can post anything you want on Facebook or, or YouTube and Instagram and probably lots of other social media sites that I've never even heard of. Uh, and you can do it very quickly and there's nobody to take a look at what you post and you can do it anonymously. Unless you want to take credit for it, nobody has to know the name of who's doing the posting. So uh, the existence of social media facilitates the politics of personal destruction. It uh, makes it so much easier to, as you might say in hockey, to play the man rather than the puck. Uh, it's, it's perfect for that. It's not the greatest for the discussion of ideas, but it's perfect for uh, going after a person. And then finally we have the speed up of the media cycle, which has a news cycle, which has been facilitated by all the innovations that I just mentioned. So again, 20 years ago, um, each form of media had its own rhythm, which allowed for some editorial control. The uh, TV was aiming for the nightly news broadcast, or the newspaper was aiming for next morning's news. Um, today, all media uh, publish to their websites, radio, TV, newspaper, they all publish to their websites. They're still putting out broadcasts and and uh, print editions, but uh, you know, the notion of a broadcast is rapidly becoming obsolete. The, the, the idea that you send something out at a certain time and people sit around and watch it. I mean, now more and more you're producing a, a certain item which then sits on a digital shelf somewhere and uh, whenever they want, consumers go out and grab it if they're interested and look at it. So it's, it's a, you know, everything is present tense now. It all happens at the, at the speed of light. And that means that um, <clears throat> serious research and fact-checking in the media, uh, and I'm talking here about the, the, the so-called mainstream media, you know, have really suffered. So in my case, um, no media outlet in the country ever wrote a story about um, what had happened in Lethbridge. Even the CBC, which is the biggest news gathering organization in the country. I mean, you know, walk into a CBC office that you can see hundreds of people sitting around at computer terminals. So what are they all doing? Well, they're not, I guess they're reading social media, but, but they're not invest, doing an independent investigation of the news, at least not in my case. In my case, the story started with the post of finding an okay with child pornography and then went forward from that. So it's, it's only in the book that you will find the full story of, of how that came about. And I had to piece that together by talking to other people who had been there that night, uh, by tracking down stuff in obscure publications like Wind Speaker, which is a native uh, online magazine or newspaper and published in Alberta, because the perpetrators bragged later to Wind Speaker about how they had done it. Um, so I was able to pick up crucial details there. But um, mainstream media, uh, you know, they never did their job. So I think it's the acceleration of the news cycle and the fact that I was unavailable for a reaction for three hours. Well, you know, that was just too bad, but that can't stop us from publishing. We've got to get that story out. Uh, so the story was published and shaped and, and written and published uh, without ever talking to anybody who was involved in it. They didn't talk to me, they didn't talk to the people who had made the video, they didn't talk to anybody else who was in the room that night. <clears throat> they started with a social media post and went forward and created a story by getting people to react to this piece of cinema. 
So anyway, these four technological innovations that together, in my case, uh, allowed this, this story to be created. Um, what do we do about it? I have no idea. Um, I was being interviewed about it, and I, I said with a straight face to one of the interviewers, well, I think we should have a, a uh, you know, one big government department to control all of this. And I said, let's call it the Ministry of Truth. But uh, <laughs> once again, my humor was too deadpan <laughs> for mainstream media. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure what to do. I think over time, the creative power of a free society will evolve mechanisms for winnowing out the wheat from the chaff. But right now, uh, all of these uh, technological innovations, wonderful as they are, are so new that uh, you know, collectively, we haven't yet figured out how to use them properly to promote intelligent discussion of, uh, of ideas. But they certainly can easily be used for politics and personal destruction. So that's uh, about what I'll say by way of introduction. And then Fred wants to ask some questions. And then I'll be happy to try and, uh, try and avoid your questions. <laughs>